my name is Dominique and my combined name is Makali, which means staying. I study biology at Leiden University. Hello, I'm Boki and my combined name is Muthoki, which means visitor. Uh, I study nanobiology at the Technical University of Delft. Hello, I'm Isabel. My common name is Mwende, which means love. I study industrial design engineering at the University of Tiudel. We currently live in Bufosau with our host Titus and mom Danny. Let's show you around. Caribou. The past nine weeks we have been staying in the beautiful county of Makweni in Kenya, popular for its delicious mangoes. Bufozao is a stop location and is situated in a semi-arid area home to approximately 3,000 inhabitants, the majority of whom are engaged in small-scale farming. The sub location is made up of a low scattered population and a small urban center. Bufozao is characterized by erratic rains and hot climate. For this reason, the Bufozao livelihoods already feature the typical scarcity elements of frugality, showing how to do more with less. The first two weeks we stayed in Bote, the capital town of Makweni, gathering information from interviews like market people, SECU students, an NGO and even ministers. There we already noticed how open and welcoming the people are, and this became even more clear to us when we arrived in Bufozao. In their local language, Kikamba, there's not even a word for saying hello without asking how someone is doing, like Wamukata and Watindata. We were assigned to make a business plan to improve the livelihoods of Buvonzao, supervised by two Seiku professors. Seiku, the Southeastern Kenya University, is a public university involved in research and community outreach. For this project, we were to immerse ourselves in the context and then choose one or more challenges to find an intervention for. From the moment we spoke to the local community, it became clear that water access was the main issue. Since the mainstay is farming, water is needed not only for domestic uses, but crops as well. People can take up to multiple hours per day fetching water. This diagram illustrates the water infrastructure in Bouvonzao. The text in red indicates opportunities for improvement. With this information, we investigated eight possible interventions. We later narrowed it down to water storage and reuse of grey water. Finally, we selected the most affordable, feasible, desirable and locally suitable idea. Reuse of dishwater. Our target group is domestic households in Bouvonzao. This is a majority of women and children, as the men tend to have jobs in the city and spend most of their time there. In order to fit the context, we have to think frugally, not only because of the low purchasing power of the community members, but also because of other constraints. Firstly, materials were limited as the nearest town to Katanswani only has a small assortment. Materials should preferably be portable in the cramped Kenya bus, matatus, and on motorbikes boda bodas. Additionally, we had no easy access to testing facilities. Lastly, we had no translator, which made the necessary communication with the community difficult at times. So why reuse of dishwater? We noticed that after the dishes were done, it was normal to discard the used dishwater directly into the surroundings near the house. For the dishes, we used around 15 liters per day. That is more than a daily drinking water quantity for a family. At that moment, we saw a potential opportunity to focus on. When asking community members, they said they would indeed use a filter if it was safe and that something around 3,000 shillings would be a fair price. They were also already familiar with filtration systems from science lessons in school, so they easily believed in its potential. By making a filtration system that is easy to assemble and use, requiring minimal resources, the filter should be affordable and accessible to as many people as possible. Using a heuristics approach, we made a filter using materials found in the shamba, such as sand and charcoal, and ones found in Katonsweni, like the buckets and tap. The first step is pouring dishwater through a handheld sieve to filter out the food remains. It then goes through a layer of gravel and cotton that traps larger debris. The main function of the top bucket is to be a water input reservoir. The second bucket is where the bulk of the filtration happens due to sand which physically filters out particles and crushed charcoal which absorbs contaminants. Cloth is used as a separation for easy cleaning and replacement of the layers. In the third bucket there are windows in the site for coriander plants. Plant roots have water filtration properties, and coriander is a popular herb in the area. In addition, plant roots can remove nitrogen, which is present when people cook a lot of beans, a staple food in Bufozao, found in dishes like kiteri. Finally, the water flows into the storage reservoir. To complete the process, the water should be boiled, something people are already used to doing for their drinking water. While building our prototype, we faced a number of issues. The sand is very dirty. Charcoal takes ages to crush. 
and keeping things clean on the farm is quite challenging. Overall, the process was more labor intensive than expected and the materials weren't as clean as we preferred. During the experiment, we noticed that the water flow rate was too fast for the raw water to have enough contact time with the filter layers, most notably the charcoal. For this reason, we already predicted that not enough of the contaminants had been absorbed. As for the results, they were indeed disappointing. Soap was still visibly present in the water and the turbidity was quite high, along with smelling like sand. The likely culprit for the remaining soap in the water was our use of charcoal rather than activated charcoal. Activated charcoal has a much higher adsorbency capacity than normal charcoal, but is also much more expensive. An essential improvement to our design would be to develop a frugal method of making activated charcoal, or its alternative, biochar. To test our prototype, we went to the Kenya Water Institute in Nairobi for a full chemical and bacteriological analysis on the water quality, and waited a week for the results to be published. We tested three samples, dishwater, boiled and filtered dishwater, and boiled tap water that is usually used for drinking. The results confirmed that turbidity was much too high. Almost all other drinking water standards were passed, but some essential parameters, such as organics, were not tested. The bacteria we screened for were not present after boiling. In the last feedback meeting, we presented our prototype. In general, they liked the idea and were ready to use the filter if it proved safe to drink. However, they also had some comments. They preferred a lower input reservoir as the top bucket set too high. Two, the input reservoir was quite small. And three, it was unclear whether they thought the coriander plants were worth the added cost. If an effective frugal filter could indeed be made, it could have a considerable impact on the local community. Firstly, it could save some time, which people can use to work and to increase their income. Secondly, there's always the chance that someone adapts the design to commercial use. And thirdly, reusing dishwater makes people less dependent on unpredictable rainfall. Unfortunately, we did not manage to make a working filter. During our stay, we spent a lot of time immersing ourselves in the context and researching many interventions to choose the best one. Due to a lack of expertise and the broad scope, taking this time felt necessary, but picking a single innovation earlier would have allowed for more trial and error. Despite our disappointment with the end result, we did learn a lot about Bufo Sao and frugal innovations to combat water scars. We also had to find ways around the language barriers we had and realize how difficult it is for local innovators to do research in resource-constrained settings. Finally, it was really interesting to get to know the people of Bouvonzaal and the rest of Kenya. We were impressed by their hard-working mindset, openness and willingness to lend a hand to anyone. This is something that will definitely stay with us even after we return home. Asante sana Kenya for your warm welcome.